So at, at the Myers Briggs Company, when we're evaluating an assessment or developing an assessment, we try to do a number of different things to ensure that there is as little bias as possible in the assessment. Part of that has to do with the samples that are collected and, and examined for the assessment. Part of that has to do with looking at different kinds of item differences that might be occurring for different groups of people. And finally, it's looking at group differences in terms of the reliability of the assessment, the validity indicators of the assessment, and the actual results of the assessment when it's scored. When we're looking, uh, by way of example, for the MBTI uh, global assessment, here we had a very large sample of people of, across a lot of different countries. Uh, most of the data was collected using third-party vendors, through marketing firms, people who volunteered. And we set specific targets for uh, the, what we call the large samples, as well as the moderate-sized samples in terms of age, gender, and ethnicity of the people in the sample. Um, we tried to ensure that all of the samples were reflective of the overall population of the country or in, in question. Uh, and then in the in the larger sample countries, you know, we also try to ensure that critical um, ethnicity and gender distributions were met. The second thing that we do is look at items. And this is just uh, an example of um, some item analyses that came out of something called item response theory. And you can see the one example of the item uh, on the left shows that across all of these different country samples, the item more or less functioned in a way that was very similar. Whereas the item on the right, um, across all these different country samples, did not function very well. And so in this case, we simply didn't use item B, but did keep item A in the assessment. Um, so what we're looking for here is, does the item work across gender and ethnicity and other types of things? And also, in this case, does it work well? Does the item work as well in Mexico as it does in China or, or as it does in a Norwegian translation? In addition to looking at the items, we also look at the reliability of the measure. Um, reliability is really about consistency of measurement. And there's a variety of different ways to look at it. We tend to focus on uh, test retest reliability as well as internal consistency reliability. Um, and as this uh, shows on this on the on the slide, you know reliability is a precursor to validity. If something is uh, unreliable, it can't be valid. And uh, if something is reliable, that doesn't necessarily mean it's valid. So reliability is really just a, a precursor set of analyses that we do prior to validity. And this is just an example to show um, the reliability estimates. These are internal consistency reliability estimates for this uh, MBTI <clears throat> global assessment just across all these different countries where we're saying, hey, does it seem to work reasonably well across these different places? Um, in addition to that, we look at um, reliability within some of the key groups. So for the MBTI Global, for example, we looked at is the reliability consistent within or across gender, across age, across employment status, and across different ethnic groupings. And like I said before, we did look at that in some of the other countries besides the United States using different ethnic uh, categories that were appropriate for that local area. And finally, um, here again, I'm just showing for the MBTI Global Assessment, we have the reliability estimates for all of those different countries and language samples that were included in that um, analysis. So in addition to reliability, we look at validity. Validity is whether or not um, a measure is measuring what it's supposed to measure, which is not necessarily a very clear definition. But basically, instruments don't have uh, inherent validity. They have validity for a purpose with a, with a sample or a population. Um, I like to use the example of a hammer or in a screwdriver. Um, just because I take a hammer and use it to pound a screw, I can't say that the hammer is a bad tool when I'm using it for something it wasn't intended to do. So validity is all about, is it does it do what it's supposed to do in a specific population for a specific purpose? And there's a variety of ways to look at validity. Um, we tend to look at the factor structure or the structure of the instrument. Um, does do the factor structure hold does the factor structure hold across different samples we also tend to look um, at uh, differences in terms of the actual mean scores 
on on an assessment and um for the mbti global we looked at you know are there mean differences based on age gender ethnicity countries and languages and those kinds of things all of the information on the mbti global um, is included in <clears throat> some different technical documents that we have for the instrument as well as for the manual and a lot of that for all of those different countries languages um, are available for free at the link on the screen